Hello, welcome to the video for what is dynamic material instance. Let me go ahead and run this quick little example here. I have my little cube guy and a little spinny cube in the background. If I hit change color, we're going to actually pick a random color and change it on the cube. We are using a dynamic material instance to do, to do that. A deny, dynamic material instance is a way in blueprints we can dynamically change the material parameters in a material instance on a object that has a material. I know that's a lot to say, but we'll go ahead and cover it and it should make it a little simpler. So we have our graph here and this is what we're doing to set that up. Now, in order to create a dynamic material instance, you need to use the create dynamic material instance node. And it's really simple. You just pull it out and set your material that you're going to create a material instance of. Now, you need to have exposed parameters to change inside of your material in order for you to change them inside of here using the dynamic material instance. If we go ahead and go into our material, our master material that we'll be working with, you'll notice I've gone ahead and exposed two parameters. If you need more information, check out the material instance video. But if we're to go in here and check it out, you can see we have a color parameter and an emissive multiplier parameter that we can go ahead and work with in our example. So let's go back to our code. I create the material instance based on our master grid material and I go and set it to a variable so I can work on it later. Now this is just me simply getting the cube that we're going to be working with and then I take that cube and here's an important thing you need to set the material on that mesh to your dynamic material instance. By default this cube has a material set to it which is this one right here the material grid unlit red. You'll notice when I hit play it is my white material. You cannot edit the material let me close these down you cannot edit the material that is on your mesh when you create it. You can only work on a dynamic material that's been assigned to your mesh. So here we've gone ahead and done that and now we have a mesh that has a dynamic material on it and we can work with it. So for our actual code, you use the set parameter nodes. So let's say for example on our dynamic material which we've assigned, let's go ahead and pull this down here so we can check it out we have the different parameter, assuming we spell it, parameter. We have the different vector, we have, sorry, we have the different set parameter nodes here. We'll go with set parameter. We have a scalar, a texture, and a vector. Scalars are floats, vectors are three value floats, and then textures are textures. So for example, what we're doing is we're gonna change the vector parameter that I've exposed, which is our red, green, and blue, and we're setting it to random color and we're going ahead. Then we set it on the actual material instance itself. Your material instance parameter setters, your set vector set scalars will ask you for the values you want to change, the target, which is our dynamic material, and then the parameter name. And that parameter name needs to be exact. If I was to change this to the English spelling and go ahead and play, you'll notice change color doesn't work because in our actual material, we do not have an exposed parameter with a U, it's just C-O-L-O-R. So we'll go ahead and correct this, and we'll go ahead and hit play, and it should work again. Now, let's go ahead and see how this works. We'll make another one. Let's take our dynamic material, and we're gonna go ahead and set a scalar this time. So we wanna go ahead and set our emissive value. So let's go back into here and we've named it emissive multiplier. Another easy way of doing this is let's go into our master. Let's find our parameter. Let's go in here and let's actually control C. Oh, okay, that would be control V. Let's try that again. Let's go ahead and select copy it out. Go into here, paste it in, and now we make sure our spelling's correct. And let's go ahead and let's do the same thing. Let's go ahead and do another random value. Let's say this between, I want to make sure it's at least visible between one and five. 
And that's it. Now it should go ahead when we run it. Should not only change color, it should change the emissive value, which is kind of hard to see. Let's go ahead and let's let's get rid of atmospheric fog. Let's get rid of the spy sphere. Let's see if that works at all. And still kind of hard to see, but go. you can go ahead and trust me. We are changing. Actually, let's see what happens. Heck, let's close this. Well, let's make this let's make this between 50 and 100. Let's see what happens. Well, it's still kind of hard to see, but we are changing the emissiveness. Some of those of you know us are more you know, um brighter than others. But yeah, that's that's how you change the that's how you use a dynamic material instance. You basically make sure you create your dynamic material. Make sure you assign it to your appropriate mesh. And then you go ahead and set the different values on the actual um, dynamic material instance. You set your appropriate values, your vectors, your scalars, or your textures. And then that's it. That's how you can go ahead and change things dynamically. One nice thing, let's say for example, you had a car and you had a inside of your material. Let's say we had this material here. And let's say one of these parameters determined how rough it was. We had a zero to one value on the roughness and because you had rain or no rain, for example. You could set it up as an exposed parameter and you could have it actually adjustable inside of your blueprint. And then if it's raining, you can go ahead and set your roughness down to zero because it's not rough and now it's going to look like it's more shiny and reflecting the rain. And then as the rain goes away, you could slowly maybe you know, over two minutes or so, slowly have that value change back to fully rough and it'll look like over time your material is slowly going back to dry and all you're doing is changing the parameter in real time on your dynamic material instance. So it's a useful way of doing effects in real time inside of Unreal Engine 4. If you have any questions, please feel free to comment below.